Hey everybody, welcome to First Methodist Houston. Thank you for joining us on our internet uh, broadcast. My name is Andy Nixon, if you don't know me, and we're thrilled to have you with us in worship today. Uh, I'm going to read the scripture for us. It's our concluding week on the Beatitudes, and so we're going to read them all, if you don't mind. And uh, we'll do that and share a little bit about them together, and then hopefully that'll be uh, a great uh, Sunday morning worship service for us. But this is Matthew chapter 5. We've been in these for the few weeks, but I thought we would look at them uh, together this morning. And here's what Jesus said. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Um, when I look at these words, and as we've talked about these over the last several weeks, uh, one of the things I've talked about is, is how different uh, Jesus viewed the world than we do. And that you can take any one of these and see that his vision of us versus our vision of us are two you know, very different things. Um, you can pick any of them. Uh, blessed are the pure in heart. Um, I'll confess, uh, mine is not. And when uh, I think about how I go through my day and the things that I say or the thoughts that I have, uh, my heart is a work in progress. It is not entirely pure. Um, perhaps you have the same problem. Uh, when I think of uh, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, um, that doesn't seem to be how our world works in that uh, our, our world tends to um, uh, bless or recognize or promote, maybe, it's a better word, uh, those who are, are full of mm, themselves. In other words, you know, our world functions very different than these Beatitudes. Uh, and, and what we see in them is a way to live a life that's just very different from what we normally do. And I think this is the calling of the Christian, is to live a life that is different from everybody else. And so we should not uh, look at uh, ourselves, the world, everything that happens with the same eyes that everybody else does. But that vision versus Christ's vision, there's a gap there. And the question is, how do you and I cross that? Um, I spent some time talking about that this week, or thinking about this week. And, and, um, and one of the things I, I, re, I returned to over and over is, as uh, I thought about that this week and prayed about it is, uh, I remember a story from, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, uh, but there was a play about C.S. Lewis called Shadowlands. And uh, there's a scene uh, where he and his brother are, are walking uh, across the stage, and they are talking about prayer. Uh, and his brother asks C.S. Lewis, and it's like, when do you pray? And what he has as an assumption behind that story is that there's a set time, there's a set place, there's a way in which uh, C.S. Lewis prays. But his response is very different in the sense that he says, uh, as he's talking to his brother uh, walking along, he said, I don't stop praying. It's like I'm always praying. I'm always thinking about those in need. Uh, I'm always asking myself, am I viewing the world as Christ is? Uh, there is a different perspective that I have because of prayer. And that conversation is always going on. And years ago, I saw that play. And as I was watching it among hundreds in the audience, I thought, that's how it ought to be. Uh, that's how you and I should live every day, seeing things as Jesus does. And that conversation doesn't start and stop in a devotional. It doesn't start and stop on Sunday morning. It doesn't start and stop when we're uh, reading Scripture. No, it's ongoing. And you and I are kind of faced with this challenge of every single moment of every single day, looking at things as Christ does and making a progression along the lines of where we are to where we ought to be. And, and what the Beatitudes do for us is outline the ladder. Where ought we to be? We ought to be blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are those who seek righteousness, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for doing good. All these things are where we ought to be and the question is, how do we trans or how do we progress along the gap? Um, 
having said that much, you know, I'd say um, I've been a little frustrated with where we are these days. Uh, and what I mean by that, if you'll let me go for an aside, is, um, is that, you know, you and I, uh, we are living in very difficult times right now. Uh, we are living in anything that is close to normal. I mean, it's just not. Uh, going to the grocery store is not normal. Uh, going to uh, anywhere is not normal. The, the options that we have to visit with people, uh, the places that we have to go out to eat, the places we have to shop, all these things that we used to have the opportunity to do have been withheld from us. And, and so as a result of that, we have been confined. And, um, well, you know, I'll speak plainly. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's like, I'm tired of that. I don't like it. I don't like being restricted in what I am able to do. And um, because the vision that I had of my life has been reduced, and that is not something that I enjoy. None of us like being able to, or being told that we have less to do uh, today than we used to in the past. If you've raised children, you've seen this. Uh, give, your, give your child a certain amount of freedom. Uh, allow them to take on a new privilege. And then tell them the next day or the next week that that has been rescinded. Uh, to tell somebody that they have to go backward is something they don't want to do. Um, but yet we've all been forced into that to some degree. And, and so, you know, the question is, how do we handle that? Uh, what do we do now that the vision that we had is no longer the vision that we can have because of where we are? And, um, and this is where the Beatitudes may help us in the sense that the Beatitudes set the goal. And what we have to recognize now is that maybe the vision that we had was not Christ. And so we have a chance to readjust, to refocus to start again, to wipe the slate clean of the way we used to live and to live again in the way that Christ would have us. This is a chance for us to redirect ourselves, if you will, and to look at setting our path straight along His way. And while this time has been so weird and while this COVID-19 thing I would not wish on anyone in any uh, extreme case, what I do think we have the chance to do is to look at life a new way and ask ourselves that when life returns to normal and when we have the chance to resume what we used to do, are we going to make sure that we're on track for the case or the course that Christ would have us go? And if we use this time of strangeness for that, it'll be time that is well spent because as difficult as it is, and as much suffering as there has been, if we use this period to put ourselves, to direct ourselves, our gaze, to the direction that Christ would have us go, all of a sudden, we will have used this well. Let me make another run at this. The other day, I was talking to a pastor friend of mine, uh, out of state, and he asked me the question, it was loaded, how are you doing and at first, I got defensive about it. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I don't want to really have this conversation. Uh, and so I, I redirected it. He was, I said, how are you doing? And he said, nope, that's not where we are. He's a friend of mine, so he can push a little bit. He said, how are you doing? And I said, well, the truth is, I'm not doing well. And I said, I don't think any pastor is doing well. And instantly, he chimed in. He said, I agree. He said, all of us are just out of sorts because... We're not used to doing what we do. We miss the people of our church. Uh, we, we miss the routine of Sunday morning. None of us are doing well. It's like we've all had to adjust to this alternate reality, and it's just difficult. But then he said this. He said, if we use this time to redirect ourselves so that we are pursuing a greater goal, all of this, while suffering, while difficult, while painful, would have been time well spent. And about that, he was right. If you and I have the chance to um, kind of push ourselves, to redirect our gaze, if you will, so that we can be headed in a better direction, this will have been, while not good, um, maybe blessed, 
in the sense that it's a time of suffering, but we used it in the right way. So that we are thinking about things like, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom. If our thoughts head that way, we will find Christ. And when we do, I think, even though it's a gaze, our gaze that's very different from you and what we're used to, um, we will find Jesus. Um, as I share uh, this morning and as we worship together, uh, one of the things, this is confessional, uh, I've been craving is a little bit of home. Uh, I, I want things that feel familiar. I, I want things that, uh, that you and I um, feel comfort in. And, and one of the things that I've been missing uh, is a little bit of, uh, well, a home cooking. Uh, and as you know, I like to cook, and, and I'll share a story. My mom uh, is famous for um, a chocolate cream pie that she does. And every time that I go home, uh, my mom uh, uh, does me a favor, and she makes that. And uh, I have the same recipe. I have put the same ingredients together. I have uh, <laughs> cooked in the same way, theoretically. But I'll tell you this. It's like that same thing tastes very different at her house uh, versus mine. And um, every time I go and uh, sit at her table, I taste it, and it tastes like home. And I've been missing that. I've been wanting that. Uh, and even though I might try to recreate it for myself, even though you know I might um, uh, take that on, it's just it's not the same. Um, but yet, um, uh, even though I I I know uh, that I can't get that today, I, I know and believe that tomorrow it will be possible. And so there's a there's a direction there. In the, sense, uh, in the same sense that I think, um, if you'll indulge me, uh, the Beatitudes point us in that direction. Uh, today may not be this way. Today uh, may be uh, a day of conflict. Today uh, may be a day of suffering. Today may be a day uh, where uh, we don't have the opportunity to do exactly what we feel God would have us do. But what we can do today is endure so that tomorrow... That is possible. And what the Beatitudes give us is, is that vision of tomorrow. And not to say that we shouldn't work for it today or realize it today. We should. But that vision of tomorrow is where Christ would have us go. Um, in the same sense, if you'll give me one more metaphor, it's, you know, it's, church is kind of strange right now. We don't do it live on Sunday morning. We film it during the week. Um, but tonight, um, there's actually going to be a baseball game. Uh, on TV. And <laughs> I told my wife, Deborah, I said, we're watching uh, and we're going to watch from the first inning to the ninth. And the reason is, is because it feels familiar to us. And I want to hear uh, the sound of the baseball hit the catcher's mitt. I, I want to hear uh, the umpire call balls and strikes. Uh, I want to see, you know, a, a hit go into the outfield. I want to see a home run. And uh, the teams tonight, I think they're the Nationals, the Yankees. I don't care about either. But I want to see and I want to experience some of that that I used to. As much as that is true, and as much as I feel that, and it's huge, I also don't want it to happen exactly the same way, in the sense that I want when we emerge from this to be more directed for tomorrow than we were of yesterday. And that's to me where the words of Jesus are just enormous. If, if you think about the setting in which he said this in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus postures himself as the new Moses. And let's not take that as an accident. This is intentional on his part. He is on a mountaintop, which is the scene for which all things happen uh, between God and human beings. He is seated, which is the position of authority of a rabbi. He has the congregation, the people of Israel before him. He has, he has situated himself to, to speak a new and living and powerful word. And what he offers in these Beatitudes is his almost reinterpretation of the Ten Commandments. And 
what Jesus is saying is, in addition to things like obey the Sabbath, do not covet, uh, do not uh, practice adultery, do not bear false witness, those things that we hearken back to in the tent. What he's saying this is he wants to take it further and say it's not enough that you just obey these things, but you also have to look at this world with eyes that are such as these. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, blessed are those who are poor in spirit. That's what Jesus wants us to see. It's almost as if he takes the Ten Commandments and puts in front of them a higher standard. And what he's asking his followers to do is to see the world in that way. Don't let the Ten Commandments go. Of course not. But also understand that just because you follow the rules doesn't mean you love with your heart. And Jesus wants us to take that extra step to go that extra mile and to live in that way. You and I, in this time of weirdness that we're going through, have a chance to kind of reevaluate things and to say, today is not a time just to follow the rules. It's also a time to look at our hearts and ask ourselves, are we going that additional step? Are, are we going that direction that Jesus would have us go so that we can view the world as he does. And what occurs to me as we talk about the scripture together is, is what that involves is, is, is living our lives and working in such a way and speaking in such a way so that what we love enters into the mix. Our faith is not simply about obedience. It's, our, it's about obeying, but also loving. And when we do that, I think we have a combination that puts us very close to Christ and where he would have us go. As I um, think back to the two stories that I've, uh, I guess, recently used in that uh, my mom's cooking and baseball, um, what occurs to me is that, you know, you, you, you could look at both of those, I guess, and, and think of them as um, sort of um, symbols of obedience. Uh, does a mom feed her family because simply because she has to? Uh, I suppose in nature you could say that, but that's not a, my experience of my family or uh, perhaps yours. Uh, I could look at baseball the same way. It's like you can follow the mathematical formulas and, and the rules of the game. Uh, you know, it's like there's three strikes, you're out. There's three outs per inning. Uh, there's nine innings per game unless there's a tie. I mean, you can you can you know, watch it in a sense of following the rules, or, or you could look at it and love it. You could love the game. You could love your family. You could love your mom and dad. And when we look at it with a heart sense, I think that causes us to see things in a different way. And that's what the Beatitudes do, is the sense that they give us an uh, opportunity to look at the Scripture and look at our lives uh, with a vision of our heart and not just of our head. Um, and I would encourage us, I would hope, to go down that road in the sense that um, when you see people, it's important to tell them that you love them. Uh, when we have opportunities in the future that have been taken from us today, uh, let's make sure we are grateful and experience gratitude for that which we have uh, when the day comes, you know, I'll be in the future uh, where we don't have to wear masks everywhere we go. Uh, let's just give thanks uh, for the ability to take a breath and have it be unhindered. You get the idea. Uh, there's a chance for us um, in this time uh, to enter into tomorrow whenever it comes with a new way. And even though it's going to be different, it should feel at home. And that's what I think the Beatitudes go for. Over these past few weeks, we've talked over and over and about, you know, how um, this is a very different view than what Jesus would have. Uh, but at the same time, it also should feel like home. H how do you and I want the world to be? I think we want it to be like this. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. Theirs is the kingdom. That is the world in which you and I want to live. That is the world for which you and I want to work. And the more we direct our vision towards those principles, the more we will be 
the kind of person Christ would have us be. All God's people said, Amen.